The first disease that we are going to be looking at today is cholera. And of course, like the previous video, I've mentioned that there are six things that we have to know about this disease. And the first thing that we have to know is what is the causative pathogen, which means to say what is the type of pathogen and the name of the pathogen that causes this disease. You see, cholera is caused by a type of bacteria which falls under the group of prokaryotes. This is a revision for chapter 1. Remember, prokaryotes are organisms that are unicellular, they don't have a nucleus, they have 70S ribosomes, circular naked DNA, no membrane-bound organelles such as ER, Golgi apparatus, mitochondria or such, and they also have a peptidoglycan cell wall. Just a bit of revision for that, okay? And the name of the bacterium that causes cholera is known as Vibrio cholerae. Vibrio is the genus and cholerae is the species. This is known as the binomial classification that is internationally accepted. When you are writing out the name of the bacteria, which is Vibrio cholerae, the genus, which is uh, the first letter of the genus, which is V, has to be an uppercase or large letter. And the first letter of the species, which is the cholerae part, uh, the, the C alphabet, it has to be a lowercase alphabet or a small alphabet. And in the exam, you have to underline word, the word vibrio and cholerae as well. This is how you write the binomial names in your exam. So this is the name of the causative pathogen. And number two, we also have to know how does the disease spread. So before we understand how the disease spreads, we have to look at an infectious person. So the infectious person over here, they have the V. cholerae bacteria inside their body. I use the word V. cholerae. That means it's the Vibrio cholerae. That's just a shortened form of it. And you must know where the bacteria is actually located. The bacteria are actually located inside the gut of the person. And the gut is just the intestines, either the small intestine or the large intestine. You can see me drawing out the small and large intestine. And those small red dots there just, uh, represent, just represent the Vibrio cholerae bacteria inside the gut. So the question is, how does the V. cholerae bacteria spread from the infectious person to the non-infectious person? So immediately, some of my students will say, oh, uh, it just basically spreads by something like coughing. Now, that is ridiculous because the, the bacteria are in the gut or in the intestine. No amounts of coughing will be able to remove the bacteria from the gut out of your mouth. If that could happen, every time I ate something and I coughed, whatever I ate will fly out of my body as well. That is just impossible, right? So the question here is, how does, it, how does the bacteria go out of the infectious person's body and enter the non-infectious person's body? The way that it actually happens will be a little bit disgusting, so I hope you can I hope you're not eating while this is happening. So if you're eating, I would suggest that you stop eating uh, or snacking or doing whatever you are doing and just pay attention to this part. So how it actually spreads is the infectious person will defecate or poo and their feces um, will contain the bacteria. Their feces will be full of the Vibrio cholerae bacteria, which I've put the fecal matter there, the poop, and you can see those red dots over there. And what actually happens here is the feces might accidentally go into the river or the water. And you might be thinking, how in the world did that happen? We will talk about this later. So when the feces enter the river, the bacteria are now inside the water. And a person who uses the river as a source of water, a source of drinking water, may take the water directly out of the river. And that water is now contaminated. Contaminated water basically means the water contains the pathogen, which in this case is the Vibrio cholerae bacteria, right? And so what happens is the person drinks the water and then the bacteria enters another person. Another way in which the uh, bacteria can also spread is a fly or the cockroach lands on the fecal matter and then it will then later go and uh, land on the food. And thus now the food is also contaminated with the bacteria. And the contaminated food and contaminated water are ingested by another person. 
So these are the two ways in which cholera spreads. Fecal matter contaminates the food and water. That's number one. And the contaminated food and water are ingested by another person. When you're asked in the exam, how does cholera spread? You have to mention A and B, the ones that I've highlighted. You have to say how it goes out of one person's body, which is A. And you have to mention how it goes into another person's body, which is B. That is very important in the exam. So, of course, then, what are the symptoms of cholera? You see, cholera over here, the main symptom is diarrhea. Diarrhea is just basically watery feces, okay? That means you're not pooping out solids, you're pooping out liquid, and it leads to loss of water and salts from the body. Now, right off the bat, you might be thinking, well, I've had diarrhea before. It doesn't sound like a very serious thing. Oh, no. The diarrhea that you get from cholera is quite serious because what actually happens is the person starts pooping out uh, watery uh, feces, which is like brownish in color, but eventually what the person ejects or pulls out is just water. In fact, it will not be brown in color anymore. It will just be like a whitish uh, or clear water, and we call it rice water stools. In fact, the diarrhea is so bad that we actually have specially made cholera beds, okay? And the cholera bed looks like this. It's just like a simple mattress or a canvas uh, supporting, supported by two frames, like a normal uh, makeshift bed. And there's a hole in the middle over that, if you can see that. What is the function of that hole? Oh, you guessed it. The person will lie on the bed and their anus is positioned at the hole and all they just do is they just pull into a basin. Now, you might be thinking, oh my God, that sounds so disgusting. Why are they not going to the toilet? The reason is because they are ingesting out so much water and salts that they are, so, they are too weak to go to the toilet. This is diarrhea at an extremely chronic and severe level. And if untreated, the person can actually die in this case due to the loss of water. That means you basically shit yourself to death. I know it sounds funny, but it's not, okay? It's quite a serious thing. So in this case, how do we actually treat the disease, which is number four? Well, remember, the person has lost a lot of water and salts and they also have the Vibrio cholerae bacteria in their gut. So because they lost a lot of water and salts from their body, the obvious thing you have to do is you have to replace the fluid and salt that they have lost by a process known as fluid and salt replacement therapy. And how do we do that? We basically ask the person to drink water and some salts, which is called oral rehydration salts. You can get this in the pharmacy, or if the person is too weak to drink the water and oral rehydration salts, then you have to give them something called intravenous therapy. And intravenous therapy is what happens when we put a needle into their veins and then we inject uh, water and salts into their body. So for the amount of water and salts that they have lost uh, through the diarrhea, you have to replace the water, okay? So you have to keep it balanced. Uh, and this is one of the main ways to prevent the person from dying of cholera, by the way. And of course, the second thing that you can also do, due to the bacteria inside their gut, you can give them a course of antibiotics. Antibiotics are just drugs or medications used to kill bacteria. We will talk about this later on in the chapter. Now, with that being said, how do we prevent the disease? You see, treating the disease is when the person is sick. So the person has cholera and you have to treat and medicate the person. But prevention is usually a better thing because prevention is the way to make sure that the other people in the community do not get cholera as well. Like they say, prevention is always better than cure. So to understand how we have to prevent cholera, we first have to see how the disease spreads. You see, the disease spreads because the person generally will ingest out feces full of bacteria and the feces enter the water, correct? So in this case over here, the first thing that we should do is we should not allow feces to enter the river, oceans or lakes. And how do we do that? 
Well, the first most important thing that we can do is something called sewage treatment facilities. So countries, uh, governments will have to build sewage treatment facilities and sewage treatment is what happens when we poop into toilets and the feces or our waste products will enter a sewage treatment facility. Uh, what it will do is it will filter the waste and just remove only clean water back into the river and that's called treated sewage. So in the treated sewage, it does not contain the bacteria anymore. So look at the water, the water in the river is no longer contaminated. Now, another way that we must also try to prevent uh, sewage treatment is instead of relying on water from the river, which might contain other types of bacteria, the person must be provided with clean piped water. So we have a centralized water tower and a piping system will channel clean water into our houses. So we get water from the tap or our water filter system and the water is usually chlorinated to kill the bacteria. Now, in some parts of the world, people may not have access to clean piped water. So if they still need to get the water from the river, it is always a good plan to boil and cool the water down first because boiling the water will kill any pathogens inside it and then cool it down and drink it. That will be safe for human consumption as well. Now, with that being said, we understand that, okay, if a person has cholera, we can treat them with fluid replacement therapy and antibiotics, and we can also prevent the disease by using sewage treatment and providing clean piped water or boiling the water as well before drinking that. So then comes number six, why can't we eradicate this disease? Because logically, we know how it spreads, we know how to treat it, and we know how to prevent it. So shouldn't this disease not exist in this world now? Because remember, just a bit of revision, just an overview, the feces enter the water, it contaminates food and water and is ingested by someone else. So to prevent the feces from going into the water, we have sewage treatment. And to prevent the person from drinking contaminated water, we have piped water and boiled cooled water as well. So there you go. Why does cholera still exist? Well, the first thing is... Look at the sewage treatment plant, okay? The sewage treatment facility is an extremely expensive project, okay? So in this case, because this facility is extremely expensive, it is difficult for poorer countries to get access to such technology. But we are getting better at it. You know, even um, a lot of poorer countries are now catching up as well, and they are now able to have sewage treatment facilities in their capital. So cholera is starting to reduce. Now, another problem is also, imagine a situation where a person has a water tower and piping piped water going into their houses. Now, natural disasters such as earthquakes or even a tornado can destroy the piping systems. And when it destroys the piping systems and sewage treatment facilities, the feces in the area will accumulate and the person around that natural disaster will not have any access to clean water. So in that case, they may have to rely on water from the river and the lake. And because the sewage treatment is no longer working, People are ingesting their feces into, you know, rivers and lakes again. So it causes an increased risk of cholera. That can be another problem. Now, another issue also is people have a tendency to eat raw shellfish, such as oysters and cockles. And we also water our crops using the contaminated water. So when we eat the contaminated raw fish, because raw shellfish contain the bacteria, and because it's raw, you did not cook it, you did not kill the bacteria inside the shellfish, and then the bacteria enters our body. If we use the contaminated river water to nourish and water our crop plants, the crop plants will now contain the bacteria, and if we don't wash the fruits or vegetables before eating them, we are also ingesting the contaminated food. So these are some reasons why we cannot totally eradicate the disease yet. Perhaps in the future, when 
more countries get access to sewage treatment facilities, we get better at treating, uh, we get better at dealing with natural disasters, and we reduce our tendency to eat raw shellfish and also water our crop plants using treated water, perhaps then cholera will be totally eradicated. But it's easier said than done, isn't it? Because look, I like sushi. I like to eat, you know, raw oysters from time to time if I go for a buffet. So it's a risk. Uh, <laughs> so this is why we cannot totally eradicate the disease as of yet.